And on this hot Tuesday, I think this is Super Tuesday. People are voting. Get out and vote. Early vote. Just vote. Do, do, do. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Just get out there and vote. Just, what did Wendy Williams was talking about? I'm just going to spin in the booth and just place my hand wherever it falls. But uh, hopefully we have more information on the candidates and we make a wise decision on, on who we vote for. Um, uh, before we get started, just another shout out to our sponsors, Southern Nevada Water Authority, Power 88, uh, KCEP, and Las Vegas Black Image Magazine. The new Black Image Magazine is out and about. It, it was Tisha uh, Campbell Martin on the cover, and we're celebrating our fabulous fathers, as well as our uh, 2016 graduates and, and then some. So a lot of great uh, editorials in there for you to read, and you can go to any Smith's Market and receive the, uh, the magazine. Um, now, without any further ado, I'm just really excited. I have a wonderful author sitting in with me, and you know, we have, because I got two boys. So Lord only knows they want, they've want they all desired to be that professional athlete. Uh, and keeping them busy in athletics is, is very, very important. And someone has written a wonderful book, Rory Edwards. And his book is called So You Want to Be a Professional Athlete. So again, a wonderful book. Hi, Rory. How you doing? Good morning. How are you, Kim? Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Listen, all our boys want to be professional <laughs> athletes. What do we call our boys when they're just uh, seeking that goal, when they're first starting? Now they're not professional, but they they're just you're professional when you get paid, correct? Correct, or you know, a professional when you're at your highest level of accomplishment. Okay, okay. So, well, tell us a little bit about the book. Well, the book was written out of just because of that premise of I've spoken all over this country, and in most cases, when I've gone into schools and I've asked that proverbial question about what do you want to be when you grow up, most of the people stand up, and especially our young men stand up and say, I want to be a professional athlete. And the first thing that happens is people come out and say, well, you can't be a professional athlete because the numbers are very small. Well, mm -hmm. the numbers are small, but we know that there are a lot more who could have had that uh, dream fulfilled if they had the blueprint. Mm -hmm. And so the book is primarily about setting up the blueprint for them to become a professional athlete. But if that doesn't happen, you'll obtain uh a blueprint that can make you a professional person. Yeah. And once we develop professional persons, then we will 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 uh, develop a legacy that will be you know ongoing for the remainder of our, our our presence on earth. Yes, because it transcends itself in, in business as well. Because right. you have to have a certain amount of uh, discipline, uh, stick correct. to itness. You have to uh, persevere. Uh, all of these things that uh, come that an athlete would might encounter when they're trying to succeed in in any particular sport. Uh, but I, I love how you 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 actually uh, thread through your book, not just sport the sports, uh, building up a sports uh, 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 agenda for your success, but also uh, the academics for our kids. And uh, the, the two go together, correct? They absolutely do. I mean, I'm an educator by trade. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I started off as, a, as an elementary, I taught middle, I taught high, I taught private, I taught charter, I started my own charter. So I understand how in the importance of education, of setting up your foundation mm -hmm. is, is, is the, the driving force behind anything. Mm -hmm. And as I work with professional athletes currently, the one thing that I see is that they're going to a more um, knowledgeable person versus just your skill mm -hmm. because the skill set now is very you're gonna come up there's very few uh, superstars yes there are players who are very very good but the the separation of a superstar versus uh, a, a professional athlete is is, is, is very small now mm -hmm. and so we're looking for the intelligent individual who can go on and also be a coach on the court and also be a coach in the locker room and also that individual who's willing to stand up for what he or she believes is right. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be able to articulate that. That's right. And speaking of articulation and, and standing up and being that the greatest, uh, I have right. to t give a shout out to uh, Muhammad Ali that recently passed this That's week. That's so true, yes. And, uh, but you talk about somebody smart, you know, because you right. could go out there and, and box all day long, but if you are not a thinking person and, and strategic in your in your uh, sport, right. um, I don't, I think that that's one of the things that will go against you. And that and you say so, having a brain that's a critical thinking brain, totally is cru is crucial, isn't it? It is very yeah. crucial because not only do you have to understand your sport, and one of the stories that I talk about in there 
is that I met a group of young men who I asked them who they looked like or who would they like to model their game after. And most of the conversations were very YouTube-ish. Mm -hmm. So they would go to their phone and pull up a, a dunk and say, well, I want to dunk like this. Well, you know, everybody can't jump like that and everybody's not going to be able to dunk like that. But who do you set your game up to model after mm -hmm. so that you uh, have longevity in the sport? Yes. And people have to understand the numbers of years that most people go into sports. So you spend 21, 22 years of your life training for the professional ranks. And then the majority of people spend three to four years in that professional ranks. Mm -hmm. And then you're 27, you're below 30 years old in life. And what have you set yourself up for to do for the remainder of your life? Mm. And so that's what this is really all about. Setting yourself self up to be a professional for the remainder of your life. Yes, the remainder of your life. And it's always, you have to accomplish a goal, another goal. It doesn't stop. It I doesn't tell my, it, it, it keeps going. So you have to know how to attack and yes. how to go after what you want. Uh, you said invest in your child's success, and I know I wrote a wonderful article called Courting Success in That's Las right. Vegas Black Image Magazine for our June issue, uh, Spotlighting Yourself in the book. I and thank you, were, you for that article yeah. also, I really do. <laughs> You're welcome. But also we talk about how parents, what role does the parent play? And what would you say to that? Well, I say, you know, um, the creator doesn't make any mistakes. And some people may question that, but when he makes you a parent, mm -hmm. be a parent first. You know, uh, as, I, as I do a lot of work since I've been here back in Las Vegas, down at the uh, Tarkanian Basketball Academy with a, a wonderful gentleman who is a Las Vegas, Enos Wesley, uh, what I've noticed is a lot of these parents uh, want to be the coach, mm -hmm. they want to be the referee, they want to be the trainer, they want to be the, the motivator of their child instead of just being a parent. Mm. You know, I think I got more satisfaction out of my parents coming to my event just being there. Not every call, you know, you're, you're questioning every move I make, you're questioning every shot I take, you're questioning every um, time I didn't confront the referee. My job is just to play. Mm. So I tell parents, you know, if you want to be a coach, go get the most ex ex excruciating training mm -hmm. to understand what it means to be a coach. Or if you want to make the calls on the court, then go and become a referee and get on the court and make those calls. But if your job was just at this particular day and place to be a parent, be a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, you get emotionally attached. I'm emotionally attached to my children and they're grown. But I do understand that their choices are there. Mm -hmm. And anything they have to go through, you know, to go through it, you must, you must understand what the process may be and what the outcomes are going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I tell parents, just be a parent. Mm -hmm. You know how enjoyable that is just to sit there and watch your child and somebody can say, wow, what a beautiful shot that made. That, that child just made and you're saying inside, that's my baby, yeah. right? So that's what I really No, say. we say, that's my baby! That's exactly <laughs> what you do say. So I'm just, I know, I, know, I yeah. get involved. I get very involved. You know, and it's hard, like you said, uh, be the parent, uh, but at those games, and, and now what I see, I see the refs talking back to the parents when they get too out of line in yeah. the stand. And, you know, they'll say, Ralph, why did you do that for? And especially, you know, a brother would say, listen, right. you, you be quiet. <laughs> yeah. But again, for the referee, uh -huh. he hasn't obtained the rank of professional. Okay. Do you see any at the professional games when you're watching the series now, mm -hmm. do you see the ref confronting anyone in the stands? No. He's no. a professional. That's a professional. He's learned to separate mm -hmm. the stands from him calling the best game he possibly can. Okay. He has to put up with the players first and foremost. Yes. And he has to, uh, you know, he has to adjust to all of those million dollar egos uh -huh. who all believe they shouldn't be touched. Right. So what he does is he says, I have to totally separate from the fans. Uh -huh. So when we get recreational games, then what happens is that they haven't learned how to be consummate professionals yet in mm. calling the game. In calling that game. Right. That's right. So you did know know your lane. Stay in please, your lane. Please do. Again, we're talking to Rory Edwards. He's written a fabulous book. So you want to be a professional athlete. And you know, especially since summertime is hit and, yes. and our kids are out and about, um, many of them are you know, might not have a job for the summer. Uh, but they want to maintain, uh, and, and hopefully their goal is, some, a lot of them want to be a professional athlete. Well, mm -hmm. if you had to make this cake to be a professional athlete, what would be the primary ingredient to, for, for that to happen? The main ingredient I would put would first be uh, the creator. Mm -hmm. Because without the creator's blessing in anything, mm -hmm. you can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I would just say perseverance, hard work, dedication, understanding that failure is growth. Uh, and, and also understanding that you need to have 
one of the things I talk about in the book is having a reflector. Mm -hmm. You need to truly understand where you are in, in your skill level. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't understand that, then what happens is that you evaluate yourself based on your own uh, dimensions of, of evaluation. Mm -hmm. And so if you think you're the best, then go find the best mm -hmm. and evaluate yourself against the best. And if you don't, then you go back to the drawing board and work on those things that are going to make you the best. Mm -hmm. So if you know you, you're supposed to be a, a good three-point shooter and you shoot 10 in a game, you only make one, you're not a good three-point shooter. Mm, okay. Okay, so you at least got to make five. And you got to be honest with your child. Sometimes we're not as honest <coughs> as we, we want to be with our children because we, yes. we want to keep the dream. How do we keep the dream alive and then also uh, practice a fair amount of honesty? Well, keeping the dream alive is reality. Keeping reality alive. And, um, you know, it's funny. There was a game last week at the, at the center, and some people were complaining about 13-year-olds who were, you know, 6'7". Mm -hmm. And so when the boy's father came out, his father was about 6'8", and his mother was 6'4". Mm -hmm. So based on his DNA, he has the ability to be 6'7 at 13. Mm -hmm. But when you are 5'2", uh, and your wife is 5 feet, and you have a child, and you put him in basketball, there's a good chance that his DNA is not going to make him any taller than, than what his DNA has produced, which is a 5-footer. Okay. And so most people have to understand that to set someone up for what they're supposed to be in, especially in sports, you have to look at what the DNA has offered to that individual to build that individual out to be what they're supposed to be. Okay. And so, um, you know, just keep the dream alive by understanding that it is a dream. Mm -hmm. But I say to those dreams come to those who sleep. Reality comes to those who awake and pursue that dream unapologetically with vigor and with passion and with favor right okay so we gotta stay and we have to be the best agent for our for our children That's usually right. especially for let's just say college we want to get right. a scholarship right. and, and, and in the article that i wrote about you you talked about the fact that as parents we have to be those advocates you yes. know we have the iphones now with the That's videos right. you're saying go ahead you start uh, letting this college or this coach at a college know about your son don't wait mm. for them to come visit or to try to pick because if they're coming to visit they're looking for that one particular person correct, correct. yeah but yeah. you also have to and one of the things i want to i want to share too mm -hmm. is we're not just talking about sons people we're talking about daughters uh, we're talking about daughters as that's well that's right I'm so we sorry. have some phenomenal daughters <laughs> out there also who can play sports they sure can who are who are looking at that professional ranks and more and more are becoming um, just as notable as professional males. Mm -hmm. So I want to say to the sisters, you know, same plan goes for you. But um, that is so true. We have to be advocates for our children. Mm -hmm. And the things we have to realize is that you can't put up something that has a derogatory effect on what the person's looking at. Mm -hmm. So if you got somebody in the background screaming profanity and all of that, you can't send that to the college mm -hmm. because per people are human and people hear before they see. Okay. And so what we have to do is we have to either hire somebody to do video of our children, mm -hmm. but get those particular individuals and also look at a college that that's going to fit for your child. Mm -hmm. If your child uh, wants to go to the University of Kentucky to play basketball, you must realize that he only recruits for one and dones. Mm. What is that? One year they come in and they play and they go to the NBA. Well, you know, you look at Kentucky, every year they, they bring in five phenomenal players, and then that next year all five are, are entered in the draft. So the degree is really not the objective? Not at all. Oh, it's okay. for players who, since the rule has been that you have to at least do one year of college now, oh. you have to go to college for one year before you're eligible for the NBA draft. Wow. Football is a little different. You can mm -hmm. go to two years, but most players who go to football are not physically capable of handling the, N the NFL game. So mm -hmm. that's why they make it a little a little longer period of time. You have to be at least three years out. Uh, two years or three years out to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we need to do is make sure that the college is the best fit for your child. Okay. And also find out what your child wants to obtain a degree in. Because walking across the stage with a degree from a college that is notable versus not making the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball or Major Soccer, Major League Soccer is not what's going to define you. Mm -hmm. What's going to define you is what you have established as far as letter-wise. Okay. You know, if you have a BA from a, a, a notable school, it's a little different than having 
I'm no draft grade. Okay. Right? So that's where I look at. <laughs> we got to be real with it. You know what, Roy? I want you to uh, stay stay around because, uh, again, you lived here in Las Vegas for a while. I then did. you went to Atlanta. And now you're back here and doing so many things uh, with our children and in the educational system. Uh, but I, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of new development has taken place in Las Vegas. It has. Um, and, and we have uh, someone on the line. Brian, is um, is my caller still on the line? Okay. Okay. Is, is that Steven? Okay, because we have we have uh, someone on the line with us. Um, uh, I believe who is it on the line? Okay, it is Stephen. Okay, I, I was waiting for you. Yes, it's Stephen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Mumford's on the line, and uh, he's running for state senate. And uh, but I wanted to talk to him a little bit about um, since we are in uh, campaign season. Uh, what's his projection for, especially our historic uh, West Side community? We we see we've heard about the new Moulin Rouge coming about, and mm. uh, we over here.